Hey everyone, welcome to today's edition of One Single Story, um, March the 26th, day 85. We're going to look at Joshua 13 today, the first seven verses of Joshua uh, 13. And it says, when Joshua was an old man, the Lord said to him, you are growing old and much land needs to be conquered. So let's just stop with that one verse. I think most old people would tell you that old's not the end, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I, and old is relative the older mm -hmm. that you get. You know, I can remember when I thought 26 was old, mm -hmm. and oh, wow. <laughs> I was a teenager, mm -hmm. and I, this guy, he was 26, and uh, he had a brand new T-top Trans Am, and I was like, how old do you have to be to own a car like this? And he was 26, and I thought, wow, that yeah. is old, you know. <laughs> but I was in like eighth grade. Um, now I'm in my fifties, 26 seems like a child, mm -hmm. I was a child, <laughs> and 80 doesn't seem as old as it used to, you know, mm -hmm. and so, um, he says, you're growing old, but much land needs to be conquered. How should our vision extend beyond our presence because that's what's going to happen Joshua, Joshua's getting old he's going to leave just like Moses left but the the vision that he that God has and what he sets the people the course he sets the people on um, is going to last for generations how should our vision or our view of life extend beyond our presence If we're going to make a significant impact that's going to outlive us, then it has to be beyond who we are and, and what we can accomplish um, in and of ourselves. And you know, there are several things I see in, in the beginning of this passage here. One, uh, it, it declares that Joshua was an old man, but the Lord still spoke to him. That's mm -hmm. encouraging uh, to know that you know you don't reach a point where all of a sudden the Lord's mm, done with done with him, done with her, but you know because of the age factor, there's still something to be done and to be a, accomplished. And He reminds him, you know, even though you're growing old, there's a lot left to be done, and the decisions that you're going to make now are going to outlive you, whether they be good or bad. And and mm -hmm. He's it's kind of almost like He's cheering him on. Um, you need to step it up and get this done so that the generations to follow you will benefit from it. Yeah, I think in terms of like envisioning the future, my friends are not Christian. A lot of what they live for and what they hope for in their older age or even now is they're looking to do things in their life that people are going to remember for a long time, whether it be the things they've, they've put into the world or just that they are remembered uh, and that they do things that will help people to remember them for a long time. Because as long as, I guess, the idea of them is alive or their memory is alive, then they they remain as kind of the idea. But I think that the, the the great thing about being a Christian or Christianity is that our actions it's not it's not about us. Like I, if I die and people don't remember me, I'm a, I'm actually okay with that as long as people remember God. You know, as long as they and, and and so while I'm here, my vision for the future, my hope is that I will have an impact for generations to come. Not that people remember what I've done, but that that I can instill in my children and students and people in the church and, and out, outside the church as well, that people would right now look to me and see God through me, that people would want a relationship with God, that those people would then be able to help other people find God as well, and that would continue on for, for generations. And so that's the beauty of the, the Christian life and that other people don't have. Yeah, and I, I think we set things in motion that outlive us, but we're all, all, all often not aware of them. You know, mm -hmm. if I drop dead today, there are things I've already set in motion, uh, and it might be as simple as a life insurance policy mm -hmm. that are going to have lasting effects long sure. after I'm gone. There, there are directions that can't be so easily moved or swayed or stopped, and so, um, you know, I think we should be aware that the, I'm thinking about it a lot right now myself. If you make this move, what are the long-term ramifications of it? You know, how, how is it going to play out? Um, so God then says there is territory that remains, and he gives them some specific places, the Philistines, the Geshurites. He 
goes to the stream to the border of Egypt and north to Ekron. You know, he gives him some really, really specific details about where he's going to go. Um, does God speak to us that clearly? And if not, how do we discern what's next on the list? What process can do should we go through to, to discern those things? Sometimes he does speak very clearly and specifically to us. I like it when he does that. Yeah. When, when it is so clear. Go to the and turn around. Right. Exactly yeah. right. And I say, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to do that. I'm glad to do that right now. Um, it's in the times when you know he's leading, but it may not be so crystal clear. And uh, one of the things that sometimes it comes down to is uh, is just taking the next logical step. You know, and, until you get to that step, then you may see something that's more clearly defined whether you need to go left, right, ahead, stop, stay, whatever the case may be. Um, but there are times, and I'm grateful for those times, when he does much more clearly define what we're supposed to be doing next, whatever that looks like. Yeah, I do think that some people do audibly hear, like my, even my dad before has audibly heard God tell him something, and he acted on it. And, and I do believe that that does happen to some people, but God does not always speak to people in that way. For me, I think I fall into God's will more than I <laughs> step into you it. stumble on it. <laughs> I stumble into it. I'm like, oh, I'm doing what God wants. Thank Jesus. <laughs> I guess this worked out. But that's, I mean, even, even, finding, even finding this place, even finding open door, um, it, it was not like I was, it was not necessarily looking for open door specifically or to live in a place like this and you just fell into it. I God's fell into way. it and I love it you know yeah. I couldn't you know it, it's great and so that's the thing is I there have been times I, I there was one time I remember I went to a I had stopped going to college I was planning on going to another college that was near where I lived a Christian college I went there on my first day I was so sick to my stomach I was just like never in my life have I ever I, there have been times where I'm like yeah I know I'm doing what God wants for me and, but when I went to this college, I was there the first day, and I was just like, and it wasn't like, oh, like, I had lactose intolerant. So I get sick to the stomach a lot, but this was something like I'd never experienced before, and I just knew I am not meant to be mm. here. And I just remember calling my family and calling Jess and crying on the phone and being like, I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> and it was, and I, and because, and it's so weird because, like, there was a purpose for me enrolling in that college, and then I dropped out. But I was still able to do, like, plays and stuff at the college, and there's still some great things that came out of that. But it really wasn't meant to be because if I had stayed at that college, I wouldn't have gotten my job in ministry, which got me to here. And so it's it's really interesting how sometimes God, that was the only time that I've really known like God saying absolutely not. Like it was very clear to me. He was telling me, this is not where you're meant to be. Yeah, I, I've, had yeah. A few, I've had a few moments like that in my life. But the overwhelming majority of the decisions I have to make and the direction that I have to take are not that clear. Yeah, they're not. You know. Oh, yeah. oh absolutely. And and sometimes, from personal experience, sometimes, you know, you pray and fast, and and just doesn't seem to be an absolute clear direction. I think I may have shared with you one time, uh, illustration uh, thing that happened to me. I, I was genuinely wanting to know the will of God in a particular decision, and I had wrestled with it. I could I could see good and drawbacks this direction, and I could see good and drawbacks. And a decision had to be made. It, 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 had, it had come to that point. And uh, the Lord just led me to a passage of Scripture that's in uh, Isaiah where he says, whether you look to the left or to the right, you'll hear a voice behind you saying, this is the, the will of God, the way, walk in it. And, and sometimes the answer is it's about relationship, right. not about the issue that's itself. Right. Yeah, I often tell people the process you go through to make a decision yes. is usually more valuable, valuable than the than decision, decision. Yeah. You, you end up making. Um, so... God told them to divide the land before they owned it. He said, you know, this is going to be yours, this is going to be yours. You know, this, this. He, he tells them, this is going to be your land. Um, my mom would use the phrase, don't count your chickens before they hatch. Yeah. You know, is there a danger of getting ahead of ourselves? Or, or what is the danger in getting ahead of ourselves? We can make assumptions. Um, we can become overconfident. I think in this situation, it was more about motivation. This, okay, there's a division. This is yours. Now, there's motivation to go out and, and to fight, to take what God said belongs to you. Because now you're going to have ownership. 40 years, you've been wandering around in a place that didn't belong to any of you. Uh, and now, 
this actually has been given to you, but it's up to you to take the next step. So in this case, it was motivation. Yeah, I think, and, and God is God is kind of their chicken support them in this. <laughs> yeah. so, you're, you're kind of their, so you've heard that saying before. I've heard that saying. Okay, before. good. Yeah, it's not just I a did, southern thing. So. Our generational, we have generational oh, yeah. issues sure. on this podcast. Oh yes. <laughs> Still didn't know what a Kleenex is. It's a Kleenex. Kleenex. It's pronounced Kleenex, not Kleenex. Anyways, so <laughs> <laughs> that confused me so much. But yeah, I think Kleenex. 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 Yeah, not Kleenex. Kleenex. Anyways, in a way, talk about this another time. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but even in this, yeah, I think God is kind of the chickens for them and has told them what He is giving giving them, and so. I think in this situation, if God Himself tells you, then I don't think there's a danger well, in it. But but if they had believed this same promise forty years earlier, yeah. they would have wandered around in the That's wilderness. Right. The whole problem they had is God said, "It's yours. I've given it yeah. to you." Yeah. And they couldn't believe it. All they could see were the giants, you yeah. know, and and the and the problems and the difficulties. So, it, it there toward the end, it says, "I myself will drive out all of these people." out of the land of, ahead of the Israelites. So be sure to give this to the land of Israel as a special position, just as I have commanded you. God's going to drive them out. But that's not exactly how it works, right? I mean, I, I mean, how much work does God do in, a, in the vision that he gives to us? When you read something like that, I will drive them out. If, when I, if I read that, if I was here and I will drive them out, well, okay, I'm going to sit back and yeah, watch. Just wait, go take it when he's done. Right, but that's not how it played out, That's no, nor is that what he wanted them to do. Yeah. So what role does, does God's work play in our vision that we have for our lives, our ministries, our family, our business, and, and how much work is required on our part? Yes, this is inter- weird reference, but this is like one of the big differences between Greek mythology and Christianity is that, so in Christianity, God doesn't need us, but he uses us. He, he allows us to be part of his plan, allows us to use us, and we get to play an active part. He's given us these attributes like we can love, and we have wisdom, and he's given us discernment. And it, it's, even though, like, yes, we might think, oh, it would be so much better if God could just handle this on his own, you know, but being able to play an active role in his plan, I think, gives us purpose is a pretty incredible thing. Whereas, interestingly, with, like, Greek mythology, the, the Greek gods were not able, in the stories, were not able to interfere with certain things. They weren't able to go to certain places. They, they had their children, you know, like the demigods, their half-children. It's like half-human, half-god. They would need them. They're like, oh, well, I need you to do this because I can't do it. God doesn't need us. He, he, he doesn't use us because, oh, he's unable to go there. He's not, is he, he's not unable to drive them out. God uses us because he wants to, because he has a purpose for us, and he wants us to be an active part of his plan. We're not just um, like ants in a world that God has made. God is like, we are the the humans that like are created in his image, that he loves us, and he wants us to be a part of that. So I think it's, I think it's a, a blessing and a, a really cool thing that we get to be a part of that. And not that we're needed, but that he chose to use us. Yeah, for whatever reason, God chose to, to use us as part of his plan. You know, even when he gives us clear direction, there's responsibility on our part. Um, you know, sometimes that's physical work. He says, I'll, I'll bless the, the fruit of your labor, work. There, there's an expectation. He honors when we pray, when we fast. Those are things that are often required of us to be able to see what God has promised or provided come to pass we're an integral part of that otherwise we just become lazy christians who just god becomes our genie he's going to make it i mean even like god heals us of diabetes Mm. but he also wants us to get off a diet of krispy kreme yes exactly he does (laughs) oh gosh (laughs) i'm I'm not diabetic (laughs) but but you're right there's there's a personal responsibility right god god can perform miracles does perform miracles every day in our lives Mm -hmm. Uh, some smaller than others but there is some expectation on our part to participate in that hmm. and to continue it on. Yeah. Hmm. Good. Any other closing thoughts? Just one interesting thing to me, when he so clearly defined these borders and territories, it, it was not only was he saying, this is what I've given to you, it's yours, now go in and do something about it. But he also was making the distinction, it's not beyond this area. Right. And, and sometimes I think we get confused. God starts presenting things to us, making 
opportunities available and we make an assumption that it's just going to run beyond. He, he, has, he has those borders established in our lives for a reason, both what we should possess and places we should stay away from. Go as far, but don't go no further. No further. Yeah, that's good. All right, well, let's close in prayer today. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the guidance in your word. Thank you that uh, you give us vision and a heart to serve you and that we set in things in motion that last long beyond our physical lives here on this earth. Give us the wisdom to be able to walk in your ways and your path, to hear your voice, to have your direction, to go where you want us to go, to do what you want us to do, to be what you would have us to be. May we honor you in every part of our lives in Jesus' name.